Hello, everyone. So first, I'd like to thank our sponsors. Without them, we wouldn't be able to have this event. And next, I want to remind you that during the break in between speakers, you should definitely stop by the expo area, tons of raffles going on, and the networking area. We don't have a hallway. I mean, I guess you have a hallway outside your room, but there's none of us in it. Whereas if you go to the networking area, you may actually make some new friends. So if you at all are concerned about trying the IoT labs, it's been pretty quiet in there. They can totally help you out. And they even said a lot of it is just read the directions so you can listen to a talk while you play with the labs. But really, that's not what you were here for, right? You're here to listen to Shifting to Purple, a high-level overview on purple teaming. Well, I have some good news for you. Harpreet Manget is here and in chat and will be answering your questions live as you have them. Because of some noise situations, we're going to play a pre-recorded talk. So please do engage and ask questions. They're right here in the chat area. And uh, with that, here's the recording. Hi, everyone, and thank you for attending my talk of the day. Does your organization already have a blue team and red team in place? Are you willing to take the next step and shift to purple? Today's talk will be a high-level guide for organizations to take one step further in improving the organization's security posture. My name is Harpreet Mangat, and I'll be going through my presentation on Shifting to Purple, a high-level overview on purple teaming. Okay, let's start off with giving you a brief background on myself. I have a little over 10 years of experience in cybersecurity, working within the technology and financial sector. Some of my specialties include being a red team specialist, open source intelligence, cyber threat intelligence, and strategic planning. On my spare time, I do also volunteer with a fantastic group of individuals at Trace Labs. If you're not familiar with Trace Labs, they're a nonprofit organization aimed to help find missing persons while training the public in open source in intelligence. My main role within Trace Labs is leading the Intelligence and Reporting Committee and writing missing persons case reports for law enforcement agencies. So let's jump right into the presentation. I won't go into too much detail on the slide as I'm going to assume that everyone is already aware of what the red team and blue team specialize in. So let's skip ahead of that. And as most of you already know, red team and blue team working together equals purple team. Now, that's very high level. Although general, generally this can be considered true, I believe that there are many more teams involved in purple teaming if we wanted to expand on it. The beauty of purple teaming is that it can balloon out to other teams. So you have the red team, the blue team, the cyber threat intelligence team, now, an example would be, we can ask the cyber threat intelligence team to provide a threat group's TTPs, which are the tactics, techniques, and procedures to help shape a purple team exercise. We can involve members from the security operations team or individuals from the server team. An example for this would be testing on servers. We can bring in a specialist from the servers team to look at pivoting off of servers if that's one of your purple team exercises. There can be other teams involved, but it really does depend on your organization. And remember that each organization is unique. So the teams involved in your purple team may be different from another organization's purple team. So why have a purple team to begin with? Overall, building a purple team provides the relevant teams in the organization to work together in order to improve the organization's overall security posture and improve detection capabilities. This can be for small or large organizations. And how is it done? It can be done by conducting purple team exercises on an ad hoc basis, yearly basis, quarterly, whatever fits the need for the organization. So I find that there are many benefits for building a purple team. If we break it down into three categories, technology, people, and process, it does make it a bit easier to group the benefits. So let's start off with talking about the technology benefits. 
There are many benefits with establishing a purple team in an organization on a whole. For starters, improving detection capabilities. An example will be that the blue team may ask the red team to help test a specific security control to see if they can detect it from their end. The end result may be turning on additional features for current technologies in place or making a case requirement for a potential new software purchase. Another benefit is closing gaps quickly. This can be done by, this can be done by conducting a purple team test as a result from a red team exercise that was already completed. Maybe a gap was identified and you've realized that it was a small change in the configuration setup that needed tweaking. And therefore you want to retest. And this is where a purple team exercise will come into place. Or it can be simply by testing a new technique that is currently being discussed in the security industry. And lastly, the output of a purple team exercise may actually help build out a roadmap, especially if purchasing new technology. In the end, all of these can definitely help with building out a strategic roadmap that may be used to present to management for technological investments. So let's look at benefits from a people perspective. Everyone is a specialist at the table, so you really get that communication between the specialties going together. There's a huge advantage to this point. The more they know of other areas in the organization from each specialist, the better for everyone. By having that access, it can definitely help better decision making and help to see the bigger picture overall. A single team working together, people coming together and solving problems together equals a healthy cybersecurity culture. There's no red team versus blue team, but there's more of that teamwork together. Diversity, there's no barriers for providing ideas. You're all in this together. Exchanging ideas and notes, this is very valuable and produces continuous learning and knowledge transfer, and it helps to keep everyone engaged as well. And then you have collaboration between the teams, which is also great. You'll have less silo activities. You can get an idea of how other teams work in your organization and how the teams work together. And lastly, you have tabletop exercises. Now this is great from a learning perspective. Now let's look at benefits from a process point of view. The first point is testing the blue team's defense. Secondly, pull everything together to see the overall picture. Like I was saying earlier, you have less silo activities and more of an understanding for the whole. Next point, running a purple team exercise can definitely help with a technical overview and management overview. You'll start to get that beautiful balance of both not just what steps you took in order to get to where you are on the technical level, but how that actually translates into management language. And lastly, helping to open up the lines of communication within the organization, which can definitely help with building bridges between the teams. Building the framework. Now this may not work for everyone, but I find it works for the majority of individuals. If you happen to take on the lead of building a purple team, it may be helpful to go through these eight steps. Plan, create a structure, communicate to the relevant teams, train the relevant teams who will be on the purple team, collaborate, maintain the documentation, lead and support. Building out an initial purple team framework can be done in these eight steps. Once you have a foundation for your framework in place, be sure to look at other sources online and from conferences or webinars to see what other information works for your organization and build on that. As long as you have some sort of foundation in place, you can always adjust your framework. So let's start with looking at the first step, which is planning. This step will take the longest, planning to build up the purple team framework. This is where the research starts, so plan in advance. You'll want to start with gathering information. Now, this can be through conferences, meetup groups, online trainings, webinars, books, and open source documents. You'll also want to make sure that you strategically plan your metrics in this stage. This is where you'll start asking questions like, what information does CISO, CIO, CTO, or business want to see? 
Maybe the CISO wants to see metrics at both the technical and management level. So you want to have that balance of both pieces of information in your metrics. An example is to tie information to the CIS controls or to MITRE or to risk ratings. So you want to have that list in your requirements when building out the framework. Building out the structure. Start to organize this information that you've gathered and see what makes sense from a flow diagram perspective. You'll want to use this information to mold it towards your team and your organization. Start creating a purple team framework and process. Now, this does not have to be a final copy, but aim to have a good draft version handy before presenting it to the purple team for their input. Depending on how many teams are working together, it can get chaotic if there is no flow in place. This is why it's important to organize how each team will play their part. Now, here's a quick example of what a process can look like. So we can start off with preparing for a purple team test, conducting the test, mapping the findings or list of the gaps, produce a report, and then retest to follow up on testing to ensure the gap is closed. You can definitely expand on that in order to fit your organization's needs. For example, expanding may entail having a sign-off process by management before proceeding with an exercise. In step three, you'll want to start communicating with the various teams that will be involved in a purple team exercise. Start by introducing the concept the benefits will bring to the organization and presenting your first draft of the purple team framework, the process, flow diagram, and any other supporting documents you have. Some teams may be more heavily involved than others, which is why it's important to encourage everyone to provide feedback into the process, as everyone can bring a different perspective to the table. And who knows, you may uncover new ideas that will be valuable to the purple team framework that you hadn't thought of. I can't stress this next point enough, but communication is key. There is value in keeping the lines of communication open. So once you've communicated and received feedback from the various teams, adjust the framework as needed. Now, this may take a couple of drafts, draft versions before you actually have a working version that you can work with. Training. This is where you'll want to conduct training on how a typical purple team exercise may occur, presenting the process and flow diagram. Start with a mock-up of a purple team exercise test and run through the process. List out what works, what doesn't work, have everyone ask questions and make notes. Collaboration, now this falls nicely into the first point. Ask for feedback from the teams involved. Everyone's feedback is important. This is inclusion. You'll want to ensure that all teams are on board. So be sure to let everyone know that this is not just your framework. This is the team's framework. So you'll want to tweak and tune the framework or process until you have a final version that teams can work with. Ensure the management level the teams involved provide their feedback as well before signing off on a version to use. And lastly, organize what, where the information should be stored and how information should be shared. For example, create a collaborative workspace for the team where they can leverage information sharing and store documentation. Maintenance. Implement a change log. Now, this will be helpful to see when changes were made to processes flow diagrams, and other documents pertaining to the purple team. Update according to industry standards. As security changes, processes and frameworks will also change. So be sure to continuously update the documentation as needed. And the last point, update according to changes you see in the environment. Please note that you do want to have a designated team that will be accountable for the document to take care of the maintenance piece. Leading the team. There are a few things that need to be considered when leading the team. For starters, you'll want to take lead on the ownership of following up on documenting findings and closing gaps from purple team exercises. Secondly, 
you'll want to ensure you can show metrics from Purple Team exercises. Metrics can transform or drive the strategy and direction of an organization or team. Now, this can be a technical overview or simply a management overview to produce value-added metrics, or both. An example would be to take the findings from a Purple Team exercise conducted, mapping them to MITRE, CIS controls, risk levels, finding the number of control failures detected on a year-to-date basis, or any other metrics that work for your organization. For each Purple Team exercise that will be conducted by the Purple Team, you'll want to ensure you pull in the relevant teams for that exercise. As I stated earlier in my presentation, some teams may be more heavily involved than others. And there may be other teams that will not be a part of a specific Purple Team exercise at all. And lastly, the last step is support. You want to ensure you are there as support for the team. Be that point of contact for your teams to ask questions, discuss ideas, and ensure that you encourage collaboration on a whole. And this concludes the eight-step process for building the framework.